the Starship Atlantis has been at the forefront of a number of events over the past few years, having fought against the Borg and the Undine, assisted the Romulan Republic in building their new homeworld, being on the front line of the Iconian War, making first contact with the Lucari, and stopping a Herc invasion, the feats of this ship and its crew have been spread across the Federation and the Kittimer Alliance. However, this is not the first ship to be named Atlantis, and its lineage actually stretches back to Earth's earliest days of space exploration. On October 3rd, 1985, the NASA Space Shuttle Atlantis, OV-104, launched for its maiden flight. This would be the first of 33 missions into Earth's orbit. The Space Shuttle's final mission would also be the very last Space Shuttle mission ever launched by NASA from the Kennedy Space Center, landing for the final time on July 21st, 2011, when NASA retired that class of spacecraft that same year. The Space Shuttle Atlantis was named after the RV Atlantis, a two-masted sailing research vessel that operated from 1931 to 1966, and was the oldest serving oceanographic research vessel of the 20th century. In February of 2156, the Atlantis NX-05 launched from Proxima Shipyard, Starfleet's fifth NX-class starship and the first to bear the name. Sadly, the NX-05 service and Starfleet would not last long as it was launched during the early days of the Earth-Romulan War. The NX-05 was lost in June of that same year during the Romulan invasion of Tau Ceti IV, one of Earth's oldest colonies which was totally annihilated during the conflict. Fortunately, most of the crew of the Atlantis was able to evacuate the ship in escape pods. Sister ship to the ill-fated USS Reliant, the USS Atlantis NCC-1865 was launched in 2264. Originally utilized as a survey and patrol vessel, the Atlantis was refitted in 2272 with additional phaser emitters, and the pod section was reutilized to house additional photon torpedoes in order for the ship to better serve as a combat vessel as tensions between the Federation and the Klingon Empire steadily grew. After the Klingon Moon Praxis exploded and the Kittimer Accords were established, the Atlantis returned to survey missions more focused on scientific research and exploration. Ironically, this would be what led to the loss of the Atlantis. In 2290, the USS Excelsior was assigned to a three-year exploratory mission in the Beta Quadrant to catalog gaseous planetary anomalies that ended shortly before the events that led to the signing of the Kittimer Accords. In 2295, the Atlantis was one of a number of ships assigned to follow the Excelsior mission's course to perform more detailed surveys of the anomalies cataloged by the Excelsior. Four months into its mission, Starfleet lost contact with the Atlantis while it was in orbit of the third planet of the Beta Vortana system. When another Starfleet vessel was sent to investigate, they found that the gaseous anomaly the Atlantis was surveying was actually a life form. The life form was able to hide its life signs from the Excelsior's original scans, but the arrival of a second ship performing more invasive scans was taken as an act of hostility, so the life form lashed out and destroyed the Atlantis. Most of the crew was able to evacuate the ship and land on the planet, where they managed to make contact with the gaseous life form thanks to a Vulcan mind meld made by the ship's captain. They were able to convince it not to destroy the rescuing Starfleet ship under the promise that they would leave and no Federation ship would ever return. The Beta Vortana system has been marked as forbidden space by Federation law ever since. USS Atlantis NCC-32710 was an Excelsior-class starship launched in 2336. This Atlantis was the first of the next generation of Excelsior-class starships as the class was aging out of the Federation's flagship role making way for the newer and larger Ambassador-class ships. Because of the success of the Excelsior-class and the versatility of its space frame, instead of retiring the Excelsior like they had the preceding Constitution-class, Starfleet decided to update it with more modern systems, but still keep it in the same Excelsior frame. This would be the beginning of a number of updates to the Excelsior-class's internal systems that would allow Starfleet to continue to produce this class of ship well into the latter part of the 24th century. As the Ambassador class had taken the role of Starfleet's Long Range Explorer class, the Excelsior class had begun to transition into more of a workhorse type vessel. Thus, this Atlantis operated more within Federation territory, mostly near the border with the Cardassian Union. This meant that the Atlantis would have a number of altercations with the Cardassians, especially after the Cardassian border wars broke out after the massacre of Satellite 3 in 2347. In 2355, the Atlantis was lost in battle after answering what they thought was a distress call from a Federation colony near the border. It turned out to be an ambush by Cardassian warships, which were able to overwhelm and destroy the Atlantis. Officially, the ship was lost with all hands, but rumors circulated for years after that some of the crew did survive and were taken to a Cardassian labor camp. However, Starfleet Command was never able to find out whether or not this was true. The 2360s saw the introduction of the Galaxy-class starship the Federation's largest and most technologically advanced starship to date. 
The USS Atlantis NCC-72007 was the last of the original six Galaxy-class ships commissioned by Starfleet and launched from the Utopia Planitia Fleet Yards in 2365. Through the early 2370s, the Atlantis went through several refits. With the threat of the Dominion looming over the Federation after the destruction of the USS Odyssey at the hands of the Jem'Hadar, Starfleet was seeing just how ill-prepared they were to face them should hostilities break out. By the time the Dominion War started in 2373, the Atlantis had received new shielding technology to defend against Dominion Polaron weapons, upgraded weapon systems, and many of the scientific systems had been replaced with various tactical systems to make the ship better suited for war. Serving as a command ship in the Second Fleet, Atlantis took part in several notable combat missions including the destruction of the Dominion shipyards on Tauros III, Operation Return to retake Deep Space Nine from the Dominion, and the invasion of Cardassia. On April 5th, 2385, the Atlantis was docked at Utopia Planitia for refitting in preparation to assist with the evacuation of Romulus. It would serve as a secondary command ship under Admiral Picard's flagship for the mission, the USS Verity. Unfortunately, this would also be when rogue synth units that had been unknowingly reprogrammed by Jat Vash agents attacked Utopia Planitia and the orbiting fleet yards. A skeleton crew was able to launch the Atlantis to help defend against the attack, but while protecting evacuating civilian transports, the ship was eventually overwhelmed and destroyed, its wreckage crashing to the surface of Mars. Starfleet had been facing more and more threats from massive starships over the latter part of the 24th century. The Dominion developed a dreadnought that was twice the size of a galaxy class during the war. The Remans were able to secretly build the Scimitar, which not only outmatched a Sovereign class, but was capable of wiping out the population of a planet with its Theodoron radiation weapon. And while Starfleet had made several advancements in fighting the Borg, a single cube was still capable of holding its own against a fleet of ships. With that in mind, the Starfleet Admiralty decided it needed a new super capital ship that could keep up with these or any new threats that may arise in the future. This led to the development of the Odyssey-class Star Cruiser, one of which was the latest USS Atlantis, NCC-97047. In 2404, the Atlantis was sent on a long-term exploration mission to the Batran Cluster, a region of space that had been largely unexplored by the Federation and Klingon Empire. Two years into its mission, Starfleet lost contact with the vessel and eventually presumed that it was lost with all hands until the year 2408. The Atlantis had apparently fallen into a temporal rift and was sent two years into the future. It was unable to return to its own time due to the rift collapsing, and considering it had only been two years, the captain decided to abandon the Batran mission and return to the Federation. On their way back to Federation space, the Atlantis was intercepted by a small Klingon fleet who believed that the ship's disappearance was actually due to it being captured by the Undine. They believed the crew had been replaced with shape-shifting infiltrators and were determined to destroy the vessel. The Atlantis was able to fight off the Klingons, but only just barely, as they had dealt a great deal of damage to the Odyssey-class ship. The Atlantis spent months in dry dock being repaired and refitted after it finally returned from the failed Batran Cluster mission. During this downtime, several among the Atlantis crew began to re-examine their priorities after skipping over two years thanks to the Temporal Rift. This led to several transfer requests and even some resignations, including one from the ship's captain, who resigned from Starfleet to be closer to their family, having skipped over two years of their lives, and not wanting to miss any more. The Atlantis relaunched from the San Francisco fleet yards with a new captain and crew at the beginning of 2409. Its first mission was to transport a prominent Federation ambassador from Vulcan to the monastery on Pajem. What was supposed to be an easy shakedown mission for the newly repaired ship and new crew quickly turned upside down after a Klingon attack on the monastery and finding out the ambassador was actually an Undine infiltrator. This would be the first of many missions the Atlantis and its crew would be at the focal point of which would eventually lead to the Iconian War. Atlantis was not only one of the ships present at the Battle of Midnight, but it was one of the ships to go back in time and return with the Iconian World Heart, the return of which ended the war with the Iconians. Due to being at the forefront of most of the engagements with the Iconians, many Odyssey-class ships were lost during the war. As the Federation began to repair and rebuild its fleet, the decision was made to reuse intact derelict hulls of fallen Odyssey-class ships to quicken the refitting and repair of the remaining ships of the class. This would lead to three distinct refits for the Odyssey-class, each one specialized for different mission profiles. The Atlantis received the Yorktown-class refit, which focused on exploration and scientific discovery-type missions, the same as her sister ship, the Enterprise F. During the refitting process, the Atlantis was given much of the hulk of the USS El Dorado, 
which took a crippling blow defending the Atlantis as it made its way to the Temporal Rift during the final battle with the Iconians. Following its refit and relaunch, the Atlantis would go on to make first contact with the Lucari, defend Deep Space Nine and Bajor from the Herc, and help end the Klingon Civil War started by Ja'ula. Currently, the Atlantis is investigating a plot by the Mirror Universe's Terran Empire following their attack on Jupiter Station, where its ship and crew will no doubt be pulled into even more spectacular events. Mm -hmm.